get up on the high mountains, O Zion, herald of good, good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this wonderful day. We want to thank you, Lord, for bringing all of us together in this fashion to worship you in one accord. We thank you, Lord, for this new month. We thank you for bringing your people to thy sanctuary. We pray that they would unite our hearts, minds, and thoughts so that we can worship you in one accord and glory for your name. We especially pray for the members who are still on their way, bring them safe on time. We pray for the members who are unable to join us due to various reasons, wherever they are. We pray, O oh Lord, that we will be very close to them as they attend the service through uh, this uh, online. Be with them, Lord Jesus. Give them the manna from the word of God and uh, all those who come prepared to join the Holy Communion. Let them, let them, let them also join in holiness. And we pray and come into the rest of the time to Holy Hand. We pray this prayer, the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, Thank you. 
remain standing. Let us turn to number 596 for our response reading. For our response reading, please turn with me to number 596. Peace be within you. It is on the screen, so you can read it after me. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of God. Our feet have been standing. Jerusalem built as a city which is far together. to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. As as the the there, thrones for judgment were set. The thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls. And security within your walls. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your glory. Glory be to the Father. and of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. A third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. We will all, uh, at this time, the youth will come forward and uh, lead us in time of praise and worship. Come. Youth will come forward and lead us in time of praise and worship. Good morning, church. But right, let's all rise up as we give praises to our God. And yeah, let's sing with a joyful heart. Let's sing, sing for joy to God our strength.
We pray for our country as well, Lord. And our only hope is in you, Lord Jesus. We give us hope, Lord.
You can really enjoy and cherish their praises. We come together because we are instructed by you to come together because you want our people to be together in one accord. And you want us to share the love with one another. And this is the place where we just come and share the love of God with one another. We care for one another. We talk to one another. We rejoice in the Lord and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this fellowship, for this uh, beautiful church that was given to us. This morning as we are seated here, Lord, we want to thank you and praise you for this wonderful church, wonderful family, families who are faithfully coming and worshipping. We thank you, Lord, for the life that was given to us. Every day is a grace added in our life. Every day is a gift given by God. And you are so good to us, Lord Jesus. You are so good to us. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But we know that you love us so much. 
and you've been extending a day, you've been extending a week, extending a month in our life so that we will fulfill the purpose for which we are created. And we will be able to do things that you expect us to do. Yes, Lord, we know that we are here as your children. Each and every Sunday when we come, you are talking to us. You are giving us power. You are giving us guidance. You are giving us so many teachings to do what you want us to do, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. This morning as we are seated, we only look into us. We know we are sinners. We are wretched sinners. We committed so many sins against you, against your fellow brethren. By our tongues, by our eyes, by our day-to-day -day dealings, we have miserably failed. We have grieved your heart. And we ask you to pardon us. We ask you to forgive us, Lord Jesus. Unless and until you forgive us, we cannot come to you. Unless and until you forgive us, our prayers will not be heard by you. So Lord, this morning, if our people are asking you to forgive them, your presence is there. You give them the assurance of salvation. You give them the assurance that I have forgiven you. And you need them to walk in the path that thou hast trodden to us. We pray, O Lord, for this Sunday school children, each and every child who attends the Sunday school would learn the word of God systematically, understand the truth, understand the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and put their faith in you. We also pray for our youth as they continue to grow in this church, nurture them, educate them, empower them so that they will lead a life worthy of you and they will live a life worthy of you, Lord Jesus. Their life will be given to you. In whatever they do, they will be able to magnify your name, exalt your name, be a real testimony for you, Lord Jesus, in their workplace, in their studies, in their uh, college, wherever they study. Come into their future, come into their life, career, studies, Lord Jesus will lead them and guide them. We also pray for our women as the WCs continue to meet. Let their prayer life grow. Let their social activities grow and be useful vessel in the church context, in the community context. Use them for your glory. We pray for our men and the support of the church the leadership to the church, the vision for this church. Let them continue to work together, strive together for the development of the church, building up the congregation. We pray for the Lord Jesus. We pray for the senior citizens of this church. There are so many members who are unable to come to church. They have their own physical ailments, problems and difficulties. We are praying for them. We also pray for all the other well-wishers who are faithfully coming to this church in the last couple of months. Let them find the meaning in this church. Let them find the fellowship in this congregation. Let them find that the truth comes from the word of God that will really enrich them and empower them. We pray for all the other mission activities of the churches. We pray for all the future plans of the church. We especially pray for the BBS ministry that is going to take place on the 10th of this month. We pray for so many children to come and attend, be benefited. We pray for the teachers, volunteers, the time that they spend for this little one would really be useful to the children, Lord Jesus. We have only faith. You are going to provide the children. You are going to bring the children and they are going to enjoy. Pray for all the physical arrangements, all the other logistics that we are working to.
towards the speakers. We pray for the children those who are writing their examinations. We pray for their papers. They'll be able to do well and promote to the next class. We pray for all the whether churches, pastors, laity, this is superintendents, bishop. We pray for all the other denominations. We pray for all the missionary organizations which are working in this country for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. God them, guide them, protect them. We witness every Sunday, every week, there are so many churches are attacked. So many believers are attacked. Missionaries are attacked. We pray for the safety and security of your children in this country, Lord. We pray for the governance. We pray for the leadership of the various parties that they will stand with the community to protect them, protect their rights, protect their religious freedom, protect their social freedom. We are especially praying for the election that is going to take place from April 19th onwards. We pray for the people to use their rights in a proper way. They will be able to cast their votes for the right leaders so that we will be able to form the right government to take care of this country and take this country to the next level. Pray for the peace and borders. Pray for all the other countries, the countries which are going through a tough time. Pray that the peace will prevail in every place. We thank you Lord Jesus as we are seated here, we unite our hearts so that we will continue to stay in tune and praying for various needs. Ask your people to pray for various needs of their own family, their own personal needs. You make their needs, Lord Jesus. When they go from this place, they will say that the Lord has met my need. The Lord has met our needs. Be with us the rest of the time. Pray for the word of God. Pray for the Holy Communion. Be with us. Pray this prayer. The wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. After the service, we will all meet at the Morris Hall for a tea fellowship. Please come and join us. Next Sunday, the 14th April, will be observed as VBS Sunday. We are going to have the VBS for the 10th of uh, April uh, from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The children will be there in the church during this week. And we pray for the teachers, the volunteers to come and um, teach the children, nurture the children. We know that there are so many children uh, outside the phone and uh, we earnestly pray that this ministry would enable the church to invest our time, pressure and talent in the lives of the children. The church gives an opportunity to reach the children, those who step inside the church. Who knows, all these children, those who come to VBS today, tomorrow they will be the pillars of the church. We do not know how the Lord works. It all depends upon how do we conduct the VBS. Are we going to conduct the VBS for the sake of conducting as a program of the church? Or it's a mission and mission of the church. So if you could pray, I think each and every child will be led to the Lord Jesus Christ and each and every child will you know, put their life in the hands of the Lord and their life will be prospering. So pray earnestly for the VBS ministries. I request the members to come and visit us and if you have time permits, you can come and participate and uh, be an active teachers. Please give names to Mrs. Rosie Tennyson. If you are going to be volunteer, if you are going to be teacher, please do so. And uh, we also encourage and appreciate your support for the 
uh, VBS uh, ministries. Uh, especially during the VBS time, we would like to give snacks to the children, which and every day we may have to give them some snacks. If your family would like to come forward and offer uh, something, you can do that uh, only five, five days. And uh, each and every family could take a day, nothing like that. So please approach Mrs. Rosie Tennyson, what are the expenses you can give to her, and we'll be able to uh, buy the snacks and give to the children. On 9th, uh, we are having the BBS Directors and Teachers Training Program at Shalini Bhavan. Those who are given their names, you can go and attend and come back. Every Thursday, the confirmation classes are going on. Last Thursday, they have given their uh, examination uh, in the first four lessons. We are yet to cover another ten lessons. I request all the confirmation students to take these classes for serious, learn, and lay a right foundation for your Christian life. So please join the Google Meet confirmation classes every uh, Thursday at 7 p.m. And every Friday, as you are aware, that we are having the PBJ meeting. So many people are coming in, so many uh, new uh, performers are coming and performing, singing, and touching the souls. Who knows who will be touched by the songs that you are going to sing. We only pray, trust, and sow the seed. When we do it prayerfully, it will really speak volume. And we thank God for all the people who are so faithfully supporting, coming forward and doing something. And we really appreciate your continuous ministry. In the beginning, it seems there is no one. But towards the end, if you see, there are 30 to 40 people you know, filled in this church. That's amazing. The church is giving space for someone who walks on the road to step inside the church. That's one of the ministries the church could do it. And the children, the young people, energy is used to be utilized here. We know that today young people have got so many other commitments. They can go away, but they are coming and giving their time and treasure and talent. We should stand with them and appreciate them. Please do so. And uh, collect your bulletins when you go out. Uh, last month we could not release it, so last month and this month there is coming here. So please uh, pick up the uh, bulletin when you go out. If you have not brought your self in boxes on the uh, Friday, Good Friday, if you have brought it, you can come and offer it at the time of offering. Welcome to the guests and visitors. Is, uh, are there anyone? Or uh, is there anyone seated here who is attending the first? Yeah, please stand up. We would like to give a round of applause. Okay, we welcome you. I hope you are enjoying so far and you will enjoy the rest of the time. God bless you. After the service, we can meet together. Okay, thank you. Please be seated. Yeah, two of them are here. So the Lord has been so good. There are so many people are coming inside the church and they want to know whether this place is the right place for them to come and worship. You know, we have to really embrace them, we should love them, we should care for them, and we should interact with them so that they feel that this is home next to the home. That's the ministry that you and I can do. The rest of the time it is with the pastor that we have to share the word of God. So please build the church. We have to see that these views are filled in. It's in your hand. Okay? So in your generation, if you could see that this church is filled, filled, your task is over. Okay? If you are able to fill this place, you can fill it together. That's the mission the Lord has given you. Okay? So each and every minutes, uh, member of the church should uh, have the burden to do something for the Lord through this church. Okay? Thank you. Okay, members who are celebrating their birthdays during this week on the 13th of April uh, as a fun page, uh, is celebrating his birthday. So on behalf of the congregation and pastor, we will let him greet them, we will greet him and wish him and we will pray for him, especially at this time. Dear Lord of our Heavenly Father, we pray for Pankaj Shelke as he is going to celebrate his birthday on 13th April. We pray that we will continue to strengthen, strengthen him and give him the need of grace, wisdom and knowledge, physically, spiritually, mentally and socially. That will set forth with holy hand and blessing wherever he is. We pray and commit him to holy name. Give him a wonderful year ahead. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. Please be seated at this time. We will hear the scripture reading read to us. The scripture portion for this morning is taken from Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, 
verses 24 to 29. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 24, verses, chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. This gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were at the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubt, doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. May God bless these verses. Thank you. Let us all rise up and sing for the glory of God. Hymn number 223. Hymn number 223. First of all,
be seated. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and welcome you for this uh, first Sunday of the month of April. It's a great joy to see that you all are able to make the first Sunday in the presence of God to hear the word of God and to take part in the Holy Communion. The Lord would bless you. As we have celebrated the resurrection last Sunday and this Sunday is the Sunday followed by the resurrection. The Lord Jesus started appearing to different people immediately after the resurrection. We are all aware prior to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ after having raised by Mary and Joseph he took a 40 days to be alone with God to prepare and equip himself for the noble ministry that he was to carry out. So he did 40 days fasting and prayer then he was, he was tested by the adversary then he started his ministry, picking up the uh, disciples from different um, trade, to different mission, and selected them, trained them, groomed them, given them the kingdom values, given them how uh, the kingdom people ought to live. And um, so many ways Jesus taught them. He taught them through his speech. He taught them through his act. He taught them through his you know, lifestyle. And the disciples were influenced by him in the, 30, uh, in the three and a half years of his ministry. Three and a half year ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ was sufficient for the disciples to go through the theological education or the seminary uh, training. They were trained in the houses, they were trained in the synagogue, they were trained in the temple, they were trained in the seashore, they were trained in the mountaintop. Their school was not in the four walls and it could not contain them in a classroom. And they were trained everywhere Jesus was going. And they would have rather expected that Jesus would, you know, really, you know, win the kingdom and he will be in the royal throne and they will be the ministers of him. To their dismay and disappointment, it did not happen. Rather, he had to be arrested and he had to be killed and he rose again. It was a very disappointing scene for some of the disciples who were physically looking at him that whether we wasted our three and a half years with him because Peter, John and uh, James and all these fellows were you know great you know fishermen they were minting money but seeing Jesus Christ they gave up and they simply followed Jesus Christ at times they had their doubts Lord we have given up everything we left everything behind will we get anything and he was assuring them whatever you lost everything will be you know, given hundredfold in heaven. So that's how he, you know, uh, filled them with a faith that they have not seen. They are all simple, ordinary, uh, you know, guys. They were not highly educated, but they were educated by the Lord Jesus Christ and they were you know, having great knowledge, everything. So things were going with that. And Jesus was kept in the tomb. All these disciples, they were shattered shattered with fear, did not know what is going to happen and uh, the kingdom concept, the kingdom values, everything is gone and they were all there in their room, they were all there staying with fear and awe, what is going to happen. So that was the time the Lord Jesus had to, you know, spare another 40 days to appear to his own beloved disciples, appear to the public and appear to the whole universe that I am alive. My preaching was not in vain. My saying was not in vain. My claims are not in vain. I said that I will die and I will rise again on third day. And so he had to appear 
the people for 40 days. The first appearance had taken place that we read in John chapter 20, 11 to 17. Mary Magdalene, the first person to Jesus, see Jesus, you know, alive again. And then again, the second appearance, the other Mary and Salome, Matthew chapter 28, 9 to 10 records, Jesus also appearing to the other Mary and Salome, Mark chapter 16, 1, on the Sunday morning of the resurrection. So the second appearance was taking place. Then the third appearance, Simon Peter, Luke chapter 23, 34, Jesus appearing to Peter on the Sunday of his resurrection. It is true, the risen Lord has appeared to Simon. Then appearance four, the two disciples walking to Emmaus, Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 32, two followers of Jesus Christ walking uh, from Jerusalem to Emmaus on the Sabbath, Jesus appears. Though they do not recognize him until the end of the discourse, and one disciple is named Cleophas, while the second disciple is unnamed. So Jesus had to reveal to them. Of course, they were also like an ignorant and innocent guys. They were saying, Didn't you know that the Lord Jesus Christ died and he rose again? As if, you know, uh, they know the scene, but they could not recognize. Jesus was, you know, talking to them. Then Jesus had to unveil the truth. Jesus has to reveal the truth, and their eyes were open to see. And that took quite, took quite some time. He had to have his first communion with these guys, and then they said, "Oh, isn't it Jesus Christ? When he was talking to us, where did we burnt?" You know. So Jesus was slowly revealing to them and confirming that I have risen according to the Scripture. You know, he did not want to tell them that I am appeared, but he, he wanted to let them know that it is all foretold. It was all prophesied. Nothing happened accidentally. And then in uh, the appearance 5, after Jesus appeared to the two men walking to Emmaus, they returned to Jerusalem to tell the apostles where Jesus appeared to the ten apostles. They were all in the room that is formed in Luke chapter 24, 32, 33 to 49. They were all there in the room they were locked because the message already gone to the city saying that the disciples have stolen the body of the lord jesus christ and they were all afraid now the ball is on our court now they are going to drag us they are going to kill us so they closed the door and they were staying jesus had to you know chip in the room and he had to say fear not I am here, peace be within you. So he gave them peace. That's how he comforted them and he gave them power and he, you know, empowered them to go out of there. Then appear in seven, the seven apostles, the final chapter of John records seven apostles on an all night fishing trip that occurred on the Sea of Galilee sometime after Christ's appearance, 10 days after his resurrection and before his ascension, 40 days after his resurrection. The disciples start now, we don't have any work. We, we, we are helpless and hopeless. We have to go back to the old trail. So the scene is called in a backsliding stage. We do have in a backsliding. Let us go back. We follow the Lord Jesus Christ so far. The Lord Jesus fed us. Now who is going to feed us? Let us engage our own work as they were there. Jesus was really broken. I never thought that these disciples will you know, backslide so soon. I thought that they will be able to still go and proclaim the gospel. But, you know, they were all uh, simple pigeons and they do not know to stand in faith. But Jesus had to come and appear again and have a small uh, breakfast fellowship with them. Very interesting chapter. Breakfast fellowship with them. Then he empowered them. Then he went. Then appearance 8, Apostle in Galilee. Matthew's Gospel ends with the risen Jesus meeting at the upper Galilee. Matthew chapter 18, 28, 16. To be. Jesus receives worship from his followers. He also gives the great commission to the followers, telling them to make disciples of all nations. Now, before his ascension, he called all his disciples. Of course, we read the same story in Acts chapter 1, 8 also. He said that, I am going to send the Holy Spirit and you all will be filled and you will be able to, you know, um, be the witnesses 
Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and towards the end of the city. And so he empowered them. And before going, he said that the way I am going, I will be coming back. But only one task I give it to you. Only one mission that you have to do it. Go into the world. Go into the world. Proclaim the gospel. Proclaim the good news. Teach them all what I have taught you. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Behold, I am with you till the end of the age. Wonderful word. Every Christian should know. This is the last commandment that the Lord has given. This is the commission that the Lord has given, given to you and me. And that is why you are here. And that is why I am here. This is the only one assignment. When the Lord Jesus comes, He will ask you, did you fulfill this commandment? He will not ask how many baptisms you took, how many, uh, how many places you spoke in tongues, or how many, uh, how, many, how many people you helped, all the charity that we claim that we done for the Lord, or how many miracles you performed. He will ask how many people you went and shared the good news that I have risen. How many people have you encountered and talked to them? The peace. You know, this is the mission. In a day, can't you find one person with whom you can share a little gospel? You can share something the Lord has done in your life. If there is nothing happening in your life, you, can, you cannot say anything. See, with St. Paul, he was a tremendous minister, tremendous preacher, tremendous, you know, um, um, evangelist. Because something happened in his life. And so, the transformation took place and he was able to go and share. He couldn't control it. Yesterday, I happened to meet uh, one Ramesh uh, uh, commandant and uh, he came uh, to meet me uh, sometime back the last March 13. Uh, his wife came when the uh, World uh, Prayer uh, Women's Day, uh, International Day was celebrated. So they came for some trip over here and this gentleman wanted to meet me. So he came and met me and afterwards he stayed for a while and he left today morning to uh, Pune and day after tomorrow he is going to Chhattisgarh. He has been transferred. And um, he was you know, sharing with me the life transformation that has taken place in his life. And he was, you know, keep on sharing, keep on sharing. You know, so much to share, so much to share. And uh, he said to Pastor, wherever I go, I have nothing to share. I have something to share only from the word of God. And only the Lord, what about the Lord has done in my life. And you know, listening to him, I was really, you know, uh, really geared up. What a powerful verse he is speaking. What a powerful Bible verses he was able to quote. And what a good illustration he was able to you know, bring it out. He did not embrace Christianity because he wanted to come to Christianity. But he wanted to really know, is Jesus Christ alive? Is Jesus, Jesus Christ is the Son of God? That was his curiosity. He learned it and he found, uh, you know, browsing the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. And he's able to go to this certain. That's a very amazing time when they had it. So, people of God, unless and until we really seek the Lord, unless and until we are really encountered with the Lord Jesus Christ, we will not be able to speak. So, this morning, my urge is, you need to have that encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. The appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ should be there with you. You should be able to say, the Lord Jesus met me on the way to Damascus. Or the Lord met me when I was, you know, going this way. And that is the experience that uh, the Lord wanted to give to these people. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 6, Paul says, uh, for 500 people who saw their risen Lord Jesus Christ, he also notes most of these people are still alive when he wrote the, uh, uh, to the Corinthians believer about 20 years later. In 1 Corinthians 15:7, uh, Paul also records Jesus appearing to James, the brother of J uh, Jesus. This helps explain why James served as a leader in the early Jerusalem church. And uh, uh, in the eleventh appearance was. Uh, to the 11 apostles, Acts chapter 1, 4 to 9 records the ascension of Jesus 40 days after the resurrection. This would have you know, been 10 days before Pentecost, as I earlier said, but before his ascension, he appeared to all these disciples. Then Paul writes his own experience, both Acts chapter 9 and uh, Corinthians 15, 8. He says, On the road to Damascus, I met the Lord Jesus Christ. 
though outside of the 40 days following the resurrection of Jesus, it was clearly Jesus. Paul says himself, one abnormally born in connection with this event. I am abnormally born and the Lord has even shown himself to me and that is why I am sharing, that is why I am preaching. And so these are the appearances that we see in the scripture and the Lord Jesus Christ has not stopped his appearance then. He is still appearing to the people who really seek him. That's why he said, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask and it shall be given unto you. The Lord Jesus is just walking in the aisles of you. If you really want to see the Jesus of Nazareth who died on the cross of Calvary, you want to see, you have to see him. And today's portion is very clear. When the ten disciples, when they witnessed that we have seen Jesus Christ, there was one gentleman who said, no, unless and until I see him personally and put my fingers in the wounds, I will not believe. So that's the story that we are going to see very quickly and that's going to really open our eyes to see. Now Thomas, verse 24, uh, to John chapter 20, 24. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. That means when Jesus appeared, the previous, previous appearance, where the ten disciples were in, in the room, that in Thomas was not there. He fled away. He went away. He also lost hope in the ministry. He also lost the hope that Jesus would never be resurrected. So went away. But these disciples had to you know, communicate that we have seen. So when they said, the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. What a strong statement he says. He said, I don't know, ten of you, whether you have seen Jesus or ghost. Ghost, I'm sorry. <laughs> I do not know, but I will not believe. I don't want to you know, believe something that you know, people talk, but I want to have a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. People of God, we are here in the church as born Christians, born in the Christian family. We have heard the Lord Jesus Christ story in the Sunday school. We have heard the story in the youth. We have heard the story in the WCS, BBS and all these things and all. But you and I have to take a time to talk to Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I want to have a personal encounter with you. Unless and until I have a personal encounter with you, I will not believe. It is not a mere doubt, but it is. He wanted to have the real confirmation. Real confirmation. And that is why he said, I want to do this. You know, um, he is um, to be seen in two other passages also. I will read about his character. Um, I think it's found in John chapter 11, 16. John chapter 11, 16. Um, yeah. It is uh, the scene of. Uh, at the death of the Lord, Lord Lazarus. Uh, now Jesus has spoken about his death, uh, but they thought that he meant talking, uh, uh, talking rest, uh, taking rest in the sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Why I read this verse? You know, all the other disciples were with him. All the disciples were listening to uh, the uh, talk of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ is you know, expressing that he is going to die. He is going to be arrested. He is going to be taken for trial. And knowing everything, when he was saying that I am going to die. Thomas said, if he's going to die, why should we live? 
Let us also go and die. What a you know strong faith and belief that he had. What a strong commitment he had. What a strong bond that he had it. I will not leave him. Let us also go and die with him. Very firm in his faith. Very strong in his faith. He know. He knows who he is. So that is one incident about his strong faith. And the second incident that we read in chapter 14, verse. Um, uh, yeah, we will read from a yeah, few verses. Uh, chapter 14. Uh, and if I go, if Jesus is talking about you know, going to heaven and preparing a mansion for you and all. And uh, you know that the way that I am going, verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? So he is again, you know, wanting a confirmation and a clarification from the Lord. Lord Jesus, you tell us. You are saying that you are going. You are going to make a, prepare a mansion and all. You are talking. It's very glamorous. It's very nice. Interesting. But you show us the way. You know, he wanted to have clarity. He was not a blind follower. Wanted to know very clearly. So then Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one shall come to the Father except through me. But he categorically, clearly, he spoke to them. To come to heaven, I am the way. So this was the inability of um, Thomas. And for everything, every, anything, he wanted Jesus to speak to him and make him understand. And I really liked this character. That is why here also he did not want to simply believe. Believe the uh, saints of the disciples. He said, no, I want to personally have an encounter with him. And Jesus knew that this fellow will not be, you know, a real believer. Unless an uncle, you know, I disclose myself to him. I appear before him. So he had to take pain to come and visit him on the eighth day. So verse 26 says, eight days later, his disciples were inside again. And Thomas was with them. Although the door was, door were locked, again the same scene. Because they are still in fear and awe of the, you know, uh, Jewish leaders and the Roman soldiers. Any time they will come and, you know, pull them out and they will, you know, arrest them. So they were all, they are filled with fear. And then, when they were inside, again Jesus had to come and pass on the peace to them. Peace is very important because they, they were all in a very bad situation. And then, Jesus uh, had to, you know, talk to him, saying, put your finger here and see my hands. So he was really living in hands. You want a confirmation? You want to know this is the uh, real Jesus or a ghost? You can't. You put your finger. And uh, put out your hand and place it in my side. He also showed his side. Then he said one word, do not Disbelieve, but believe. This is a very strong word. Apistos, pistos, Greek. Do not disbelieve, but believe. But Thomas answered it very beautifully. My Lord and my God. It's very beautifully described in Hebrew that he totally surrendered. Said, "You are my ruler. You are my God." And I surrendered myself. You know, this is called in accepting the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by hearing from somebody else, not by reading from something God, but seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. He believed and he trusted and he said that you are my Lord and you are my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So he is also you know, giving them another explanation. You are very good. You wanted to you know, really test it. But I tell you, I cannot appear to each and every individual. Every continent I cannot go. But you people go and share. And people are going to believe it. So when Jesus, when Thomas came to India, he did not again you know, call Jesus to the people saying that this is Jesus. I said, no, 
he believed it and he preached it we are fortunate people that we have received st thomas to our country 2000 years ago in the bc in the christian era 24 uh, jesus came on ad 49 jesus prayed, sorry uh, st thomas came to uh, punjab the species where the pathian king the ruler good of us for us was you know ruling uh, afghanistan punjab and other areas you know he invited st thomas he came as one of the builders and he came and he served there for three years later on he was he was sent to south and that's how he came and landed in uh, kerala ad uh, ad 52 and he started you know preaching the gospel to the nabudris it was very tough time it was very hard time for a foreigner to come and venture in such a great ministry in the southern part think about the language think about the culture think about the religious barrier think about the food habits but he did it because he has seen the lord he is he knows that this is what he has to say and he lived there he built seven churches i think we people have to you know go and make it trip you know you people go to go and other places in there. we have to see our you know pioneer missionary a pioneer apostle who had come to india and stand there and read the history and get you know people you know you know go to jerusalem and other places he has come here let's go and see and get some inspiration and learn something he did serve converted some people to the lord jesus christ later on he moved to chennai and uh, served there and finally near st thomas uh, thomas mount he was praying in a small cave the fanatics came and uh, threw the spear and he killed him and with a bleeding body he was running to the small church that he has built in chinnamalai he went and embraced the cross and they say this will say still the blood dot is there or not there and he died over there such wonderful people of god who have seen jesus christ lived with jesus christ confirmed the resurrection had come to our country and preached the gospel it's not the gospel that we have received from the britishers in the last 300 years no we should be able to claim that heritage and we should be able to move forward to say the lord says very beautifully you have believed because you have seen me blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed the lord jesus is there amen if you really want him to see he will come even sadhu sundar singh he want to end his life he said if there is a real god let him appear to me he has fixed a time to commit suicide and the lord found that this soul is very important so he had to deliberately appear in his room and he received the lord jesus christ left the house preached the gospel in the mountain of tibet bhutan nepal and other countries and he was the bleeding feet of india and a person such a great history and heritage of pure like god what are we doing these many appearances we have read and what are we really doing so go to your house and stay in your room and pray to the lord jesus lord i want to have that kind of encounter in my life if you don't encounter in your life you cannot encounter the people those who are there around you people ask who is jesus christ people ask why jesus died on the cross so this morning this is my plea this is the thought that i want to give to you we are the followers of st thomas i have written so many things but with this i want to close with you have that real passion have that real you know hunger and thirst and yesterday the stomach was saying that i was hunger and thirst to read the bible genesis to um, revelation because he attended one or two churches 
He said, the pastor was, all of a sudden talking, in Luke chapter 18 it is written, in Isaiah it is written, so I, I couldn't understand, yea to uh, here and there. I said, I will go through the Bible fully, then I will you know, sit in the church. Such a deliberation he did it. You know, that is called real secrets. So people of God, go to house, read the scripture, it will be given. As Guru is with us, you know, he came on the other day, he said, Pastor, I want to know the Lord Jesus. I said, go through this Bible. This will give you the answer. Read it, reread it, and the Lord will appear before you, and he will touch you. You know, there are so many seekers who are seated here. I know some of you are, you know, just entered into the faith. And I want you to read the scripture, and the Lord will reveal to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Ask and it shall be given to you. Ask the Lord and He will give you. And that's the message I want you. Have personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be encountering many people for the Lord Jesus. May the Lord add His blessings through this hearing. And the Lord bless you all. Amen. Shall we all prepare ourselves for the Holy Communion? Shall we all rise up? You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking henceforth in His holy ways. Draw near with faith and take the sac sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us all say together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that of all people be acknowledged and be rid of manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Mercy upon us, and mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God of the Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come to me all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in may not perish, but may have eternal life. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is meet and right so to do so. It is very meet, right, and a bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we Lord and magnify your holy, glorious name evermore praising you and saying, let us all say together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
to do that prayer, you can kneel down or you can sit down in your place. Examine yourself before participating in the Holy Communion. Lord, you have died of the cross of Calvary. You are giving your precious blood of the cross of Calvary. I'm going to partake in this. I want to be united with you, Lord Jesus. Like Thomas, I want to know you more. I want to move closer so that I can live. Share with other people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby the one offering of himself a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And it instituted in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he is coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and bless and sanctify you with your word and Holy Spirit. These your gifts of bread and wine that we receive in them. According to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his passion, death, and resurrection, may be partakers of the divine nature through him, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as soft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us all say the prayer of confession together. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, fasting in our own righteousness. But in your manifold and great mercies, you are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of the table. But you are the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to partake of this sacrament of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may walk in newness of life, may grow into his likeness, and may evermore dwell in him. That is all stand up. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, grant your peace. Amen. All those who have come prepared, you can come and participate in the Holy Spirit.
This is the bread of the Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you on the cross of Calvary. Take, drink ye by faith. As you have taken part in the Holy Communion, may the Holy God continue to give you the need and grace and strength to do for His glory. I want to be a real witness of Him wherever you be. The name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we send you this word with His divine peace and love. Amen. We send you to this world with his divine peace and love. Amen. servants desire their fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and the whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present them to thee, O Lord, our sins, our souls, and God is to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseech me. Jesus Christ of God, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory be unto thee, O Father. Let us all once again rise up and sing for the glory of God. Hymn number 92, Amazing Grace. And before that, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Drubhojit uh, Gogai for offering. Uh, two mics to the church last week. I shared that all of the mics are going to die. And with the present mic that I'm using, there is another one, a wonderful mic he has given. We would like to thank you. Thank you for you know, supporting the church, what the land it is. Okay, thank you. Let us sing this uh, song Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. Other than will be taken.
every first Sunday we used to take two offerings. Uh, some of them sleeping every uh, first Sundays. If at all, if you have brought uh, the first offering, you can put it in the box at uh, the back. Okay. So I do not want to uh, send again the bags. Usually we take two, uh, one for the charity purpose we take, and the other one is for the church purpose we take. So if at all, if you have uh, brought some offering, you can put it in the box at the back. So that the beauty of it is for the charity purpose. Mm -hmm. We come to your presence, we sang praises unto you, we confessed our sins, we took part in the Holy Communion, we received the word of God, how you appeared to Mary Magdalene, the other Mary and other women, all the disciples and all the individuals, whomever you possibly could appear and ensure that you are not in the tomb. You are resurrected. And today's meditation we have found even Thomas. When he was not with the company of his disciples. He wanted to be ensure that he is witnessing the real resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Yes Lord you came and appeared and ensured that I am the one. And today as Indian Christians we salute the divine service of St. Thomas. Who came took the gospel from north to south and died and became a great martyr and upon his blood today so many churches have been built upon his hard work so many missionaries have emerged we thank you Lord for raising such a wonderful disciple apostle help each and every congregation members to take this history into their hearts and make and become the history makers in our lifetime. We do not know how many days we are going to live, how many years we are going to live, but we need to leave a legacy. We need to leave a footprint that we have done something for the Lord Jesus Christ. To that extent, I commit all the dear people of God, those who are standing here. I bless them, I commission them to take up the words upon their hands. I pray for all the dear ones, those who are watching, that they will also follow, become the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Apostle St. Thomas. We offer this offering into your hands. Pray for the hands who have offered it, bless it, and use it for the extension of your kingdom. May the month of April be every blessed month for all of us as we go into this world. Let your presence go with us, enable us to continue our work and also conduct the VBS. Next Sunday we will be having a wonderful celebration of children coming forward and leading the service and making this service a grand service. Till such time, we commit everyone to all again. We pray this prayer, the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may rest and abide with us all, both now and forevermore.